So I met uh, Ms. Klecko probably in, in the beginning of 2017. She had just recently completed breastfeeding uh, her most recent child. She noticed a new left breast mass that she hadn't noticed before. After I went and saw my doctor, um, she recommended that I go get a mammogram for the first time. The doctor immediately sent me in to get an ultrasound as well. I was getting an ultrasound for almost an hour before the doctor came in and she, she said to me, you know, she's like, obviously there's, there's something wrong. We scheduled a biopsy for the following Monday and I could just tell by the urgency of the, the nature of them scheduling it and the, the speed at which they got the test results back that, you know, the doctor felt that it was something pretty serious. It was a little bit of a time frame, probably about a week or so, that it was sitting on us, like weighing on our chest. The biopsy revealed that I have, um, I had, had um, stage two breast cancer uh, called invasive ductal carcinoma. Uh, I had triple positive uh, cancer as well. My relationship with the doctors in New York, of course, are through the New York Jets. Ken Montgomery's wife, Leslie, is probably one of the most renowned experts on uh, breast cancer. I know Ken. He is one of the orthopedic doctors at the New York Jets. I expressed to him, you know, that we this had to happen quickly if we could. Uh, and he said, uh, got it, Joe. He basically hung up the phone, called Leslie's office, and Leslie's office, I think within that day, called Billy. She already had had a biopsy of the breast cancerous mass, and we also were able to identify that the cancer had already spread to her lymph nodes in her armpit. In my case, they wanted to start with chemotherapy. We did uh, chemotherapy for 20 weeks. She showed up that first day like, all right, let's go. Let's get this done. And her doctor's like, I've never seen someone excited to get chemo. Her attitude was, well, the sooner I start it, the sooner I finish it. So we have to get it done, let's get it done. And that's, that was her attitude to the whole thing. If you didn't know, she didn't tell you if the physical signs weren't there, you'd never even know she was going through this. She underwent the 12 weeks of the initial treatment, then two months of a little heavier treatment, and then she went to surgery. We then, at the time of surgery, tested the lymph nodes in her armpit and found that indeed she was one of the exceptional cases where all that cancer had been cleaned up and we did not have to do a formal lymph node dissection. We actually had to do a mastectomy for her. If the amount of tissue that has to be removed would be deforming, and then it doesn't make sense to do a lumpectomy and we need to go with a mastectomy and we do immediate reconstruction, which is what we did in her case. At the time of mastectomy, I would come in and I put a balloon in called a tissue expander underneath the skin that's left behind from her mastectomies. Those balloons serve as space holders, essentially, and it allows us to also stretch out the skin that remains behind, and then decide on a more definitive type of reconstruction based on the fact if she really did need radiation or not, even though we thought that may be the course of treatment she was going to have to take. She had 33 radiation treatments daily, Monday through Friday, for a total of about six and a half weeks. Even after a mastectomy, there's a risk of the cancer coming back. And the radiation therapy gets that risk down to one or two percent. We were able to do what's called a deep inferior epigastric perforator free flap. Because she's had radiation therapy, implants and radiation can have a lot of problems. They can get hard, called capsular contracture. They don't change similarly to a natural breast, especially in a unilateral reconstruction. We decided to use her own tissue because she had been radiated. It's nice to have your own fat and skin um, as a definitive type of reconstruction so that you don't have to worry about any long-term complications in the future. The most important part of, of this is what we call the multidisciplinary approach. We meet on a weekly basis to discuss each and every new cancer patient that is seen through medical oncology or surgical oncology. All representatives from each subspecialty are sitting in a room as we review each and every case. We make sure that we communicate so that we're all in tune with one service understanding what the other service is doing. We're on each other's cell phones, so the minute I see a patient, if I have a question, I'm calling or texting the surgeon or the radiation oncologist or the medical oncologist with any questions so the communication is there the, um, and the determination to really give each person the best treatment is, is here. All indications point to that she's, uh, she's cured. Everything she did, she did like a trooper. In the evolving of this bad situation, uh, you know, I truly believe has done something special. This kind of situation puts you in a different element 
and uh, the way she went through it with you know guns a blazing so to speak it was amazing so it opened my eyes to her I fully resumed my duties as mommy and I also work full-time to anybody who's you know maybe going through this or experiencing this your job is really just to fight and uh, my best advice to you would be to rely on those people closest to you for help. Don't feel like you still have to, you know, do everything on your own. You know, there, there, there are people out there that are, that are going to help you.